Greetings and welcome back to the Kiss My Aesthetic Podcast. I'm so excited to have Whiskey and Lace Erica on the podcast today. Welcome, Erica. Hi. Before we talk about anything else, um, I know you're a self-proclaimed Swifty. So how do we feel <laughs> about karma is the guy on the Chiefs? Oh my gosh. I mean, I just, I love them. At first I was like, is this a publicity stunt? But then the more and more I'm just like keeping an eye on their relationship. I just, I love it. I think she's just so in love and she doesn't give a shit anymore about, mm -hmm. you know, people like hiding how she feels. And I think he just, it's just the cutest thing. Oh, I'm with you 500%. And if it's a publicity stunt, then kudos, like good for you <laughs> for pulling that off from a marketing standpoint. Like I, my brain would never go there. So I just love that. That's like even a topic of conversation for some people. Yeah. At the um, beginning, I was like, wait a minute. And then, and then wait, once, you just, yeah, once you started watching more and more of their, you know, interactions, I just thought they were so cute. I'm for exactly. it. I'm, I'm just, I love seeing her happy and carefree, you know, in this, in this realm of her life, because I feel like it's always been so private. And yeah. this is the first time where she's just like, I'm going to, I'm going to put it all out there. Totally. And just from like women entrepreneurs, we love mm -hmm. to see a girl at the top of her game and her man just like supporting her. Totally. Even totally. though he's at the top of his. Anyway, but the real reason we are here talking today is because you just launched your podcast. I did. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're so excited. Tell us how did you even think about starting a podcast? What was the backstory? What was the motivator to get this thing going? Well, I've been doing, you know, influencing for lack of a better term for a really long time. And I just felt like I needed to challenge myself with something. I needed to start giving my audience something a little bit more. And I felt like the obvious thing that I could have done was generate a cookbook because everybody knows that I love to cook. And I do these things called Sunday suppers where I cook with everybody on my stories. But I also had heard how daunting starting a cook, like, you know, publishing a cookbook would be. And, and I just felt like that was obvious, like too obvious. And I love to chat. And then I just decided at one point I said, you know, I shared a story about the, you know, where whiskey and lace originated from. And after that, like more long for format of a story that I shared, people were like, you really need to start a podcast because I just touched on a topic that not many people um, talk about, which was friendship breakups, which will be in one of my episodes, by the way, um, on my new podcast. But, um, and so it just kind of got my wheels turning and it's one of those things where you're like, oh, I can do it. And then once you start to kind of really look into it, you're like, wait a minute, I am very foreign to this space. I have no idea what I'm doing. And that's when I started to get like, I announced it before I really knew what I was doing. And then I got a little nervous. So then, you know, through word of mouth, I luckily stumbled upon you and your team. Thank goodness, because I don't know if I would have been able to get it off the ground, especially in a really professional manner. And I knew I didn't want to just start this podcast and throw it up, you know, like it was just this like, you know, here's episode one, I really wanted to be intentional. I really wanted to look professional, but I also had no idea how to do that. So it's kind of where it all started. And I'm so excited, you know, that it launched and it's had the success already that it has. And I think, you know, you and your team for, for a lot of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. The thing is you would have found a way to figure it out. Like I'm yeah. a big believer in like, uh, we work with super capable, very intelligent, like very hardworking people. So you would have figured it out, but the benefit of having us in your corner is like, we can get it out looking great like yes. optimized in all the places. And like you said, professional creating some structure around it to kind of like make it feel like a thing, like make it feel like a moment instead of a, um, like, I know you listen to the toast. We have that yes. in common as well. They have their running list of like podcasts that aren't podcasts anymore. Yeah. Because it's, it's so yeah. true. So many people bail. Okay. Yes, I've noticed that, you know, with a lot of influencers specifically, to be honest, you know, I think that they get in and they realize, whoa, like, this is a lot harder than we thought. And so, you know, you just, you made it so seamless and so easy and you just, your whole team was so wonderful to work with. I was so hey. grateful. You took a weight oh off my, my shoulders for sure. Oh, good, 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 good. I love that you're also approaching it with intention, right? Like this isn't just like another opportunity. I think people that burn out are the ones like look at it as like a cash grab mm -hmm. and it's kind of the wild, wild west, the podcasting yeah. space. It's a little yeah. like, it's not as obvious. Your numbers aren't published. Like it's kind mm -hmm. of a, either you've got the downloads or you don't, but there's not really any way to cross check anybody versus like you can go to their Instagram and see what their engagement rate is. And a lot for of sure. cases, right? For sure. Um, and I don't think it's as easy just to grab ads either, especially for a first time podcaster, because totally. you have nothing for brands to go against. So if, totally. if I were to, you know, 
talk to anybody that wanted to start a podcast. I didn't really do this as like, okay, this is going to be my next big, you know, revenue stream. It was just offering my audience something a little more and giving them more long format of content. And it's paying off because I can just tell in my DMs already that I, it won't even be the day that I launch a podcast and I'll get, oh my gosh, I just listened to this and it was so good. So it's still Mm -hmm. like, there's engagement behind it, you know, and but mm-hmm. not necessarily revenue just yet. So it wasn't really my intention to go in with like thinking it was going to generate a ton of money to begin with at all. Were you a big podcast listener before? And what kind of shows stood out to you as like, okay, I think I could see myself doing that. Not huge, but definitely the toast. You know, I yeah. loved listening to them. Um, but again, not huge. I, I it's not something yeah. I do regularly. I usually, you know, will walk my dog and I'll turn one on. But um, or if somebody like shares one, like um, Mel Robbins, you know, like I'll sure. listen to her from time to time. Um, but it wasn't like something that I'm just very into. I love the Laughing Couple podcast from my friend Brittany uh, Bustafi. Um, so you know, there's a couple that I'll just tune into when I'm in the mood. But um, for the most part, not really. And I think that actually worked out in my benefit because yeah. I didn't then try to compare myself. I mean, you know that I did to like the toast and like, of course, real, but they've been around for a while. Those girls. Yes. So I yes. had to like, honestly take my expectations of wanting to be like the, the toast, which has been out there for so long and bringing it down a notch. And what you really helped me with too, was I was really nervous about starting something without an end point. And mm-hmm. that was very daunting to me. And then you suggested, why don't we just launch with a season one? And I loved that idea because then I could take a moment after I finished recording all my first episodes and then analyze it. What did people like? What didn't they like? What do I want to include in the next season that I didn't include this season? And it made it, it made it more doable for me. And granted, mm-hmm. it took me a while to record all those because again, I was a pain probably in your butt in the sense that Not I really wanted people to be in my living room yeah. because one of my biggest goals is that I wanted to people to feel like when they're listening to my podcast to feel like they're there with us in my living room. And it's so interesting because I never put that out there really. And the feedback I got from the first two episodes on the launch day was, I felt like I was in the living room with you and your dad, or oh gosh, I felt like I was, you know, having a glass of wine with you and Mark talking about real estate. And I was like, we did it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. accomplished. And not that you can't get that here, but there is just something about being in that comfortable space, especially because I had guests on like my dad. Like, sure. um, you know, my brother-in-law who have never really been on podcasts before. And so I felt like it was, it needed to be in person. It felt more personable. Like we're just sitting here having a conversation, but you have a microphone and headphones on. And they all felt really comfortable with that. And I feel like that connected to the audience. So I was really glad I took that approach. There's two factors that make that the perfect scenario for your show specifically. And I think on the one hand, it's the subject matter. And on the other hand, it's your audience. So when we think about the topics that you're going to cover, and like you've been doing lifestyle content for a really long time. So when you're talking about that stuff, it makes all the sense in the world to have people who are in your life part of the show. Alternatively, for me, I'm I'm always interested in talking to clients, of course, but I'm trying to talk to the guys that own the marketing agency in Sweden. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I'm using it as a networking tool. So my intentions behind the podcast are completely different. Yeah. And really the podcast is just a modality to then hit those goals. Whereas your audience and your subject matter are, are just totally separate. Right. And your audience is looking for that. This is the show I put on when I'm cooking dinner for my kids or I'm, you know, on my way to school, drop off or pick up. Like that's the kind of show. So it makes so much sense that it's in that casual living room environment. Because those two totally. things match each other. And I feel like people, when they start their very first podcast, need to set that kind of intention. What do you want your audience to get from this? You know, what do they? Absolutely. What do you want them to feel? What do you want them to, you know, have feedback on? You know, like what kind of feedback do you want to get from them? And so I just knew that I wanted it to be an extension of what they already see. Mm-hmm. And down the road, I'd love to add in the video element in a way mm-hmm. that I don't have to deal with it because that was a biggest. That was probably my the biggest sword in my side and hiccup sure. in the whole thing. And I just had to get to a point where I was. Like I can't, I can't focus on this anymore. I need to just get the good content out audio wise. And my audience kept telling me because I would share my struggles on my stories when it came to audio. They're like, Erica, we don't care about seeing it. We just care mm-hmm. about listening to it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, but I care. And then I just had to realize and take a step back that I'm not doing this for me. I mean, I am in some sense because these interviews that I did with these people that I love are something that I'm going to cherish. But I'm really doing it for my audience. And they're sitting here like telling me, stop it. (laughs) Stop doing that. Just put out the audio. And then I finally like caved. I was like, 
my ego is not my amigo. I need to let it go and just put out the content. And you guys were really a big help with that in the sense that I really wanted to have these, you know, thought out reels with every episode that we generated. And you guys pivoted with me that, hey, we're not, we don't need your visual. We just need the audio and we can make a really cool reel for you without having to use, you know, the visuals of you and the person in your living room. So, and that was the helpful. way that we approached it was like, this is a big fat experiment. I think by mm-hmm. creating just the season one of it all, you're not saying like you're committing to doing it this way for forever, but totally. like by kind of chunking it out and like creating some finality to it, you give yourself an opportunity to like audit. Okay. What can we improve? What can we do better? Do we want the same theme song? Do we want to remix? Do we want to do ads? Do I want to do solo episodes? Like there's so many, like if we think of this, your project is like a giant switchboard right? There's so many dials and triggers and like sliders that we can mess with to make it your perfect show. But there's almost no way to come out the gate making it 100% perfect. For sure. And I had to let go of that big time. Uh And you guys made me feel comfortable with letting go with that. Mm -hmm. And no one's complained so far. Like, I wish I mean, some people were saying like, is this on YouTube? I'm like, no, not yet. But for the most part, nobody's really going, I really wish I could have seen your dad giving that interview. I'm sure they would love it but they don't feel like they're missing it right now, you know? So right. that's been, right. that's been great to realize now that it's right. out. Let's kind of go through the whole process and how we structured it. Cause I think this is interesting for people who might be considering a podcast as well. Mm-hmm. It's like how we approached it because I've teamed up with Berta who produces my podcast. So she handles everything on the podcast side, but let's go back to that first like phase one where we were really coming up with like the name, the concept, the episode topics. Walk us through what that was like on your side of the experience of like, okay, now I'm actually committing this to paper and deciding what I want. What was that like for you? Well, you guys made it really seamless and easy. I'm a very visual person and I loved that right away, you just gave me so much visual content of what the brand around the podcast was going to look like. I already sort of had my other branding for my other faucets of my brand, but this, I needed like, it needed to be clearly different. And you Mm -hmm. guys, you know, you came to me with like Canva, you know, mock-ups and it just made it, it, it put the visual to, you know, it put it, to a visual place, which I loved. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you guys, and you set me up on this thing called Basecamp, which I had never Mm -hmm. been on before. Mm -hmm. So everything was very organized and easy to find. I knew what your expectations of me were. I knew what my, you, I feel like you guys knew the expectations that I had of you. Um, And we would meet, you know, every other week. Sometimes there'd be some time between because at the time when we were kind of rolling with this and getting into it was summer break for my kids. And I just put, you know, I told you guys from very upfront and was very transparent, which you guys were so patient with me on was, you know, my kids are my utmost priority. And so this is going to take me a while to get these guests here. And you guys just were really sensitive to that. And so there was no pressure. It was like, I'm not in a hurry to launch this. And so it was nice to just have that relaxed, like, okay, what are we doing next? But we also set deadlines because we don't want to just like go to the wayside. So that was also helpful. But you guys went at the pace that I was comfortable with. And it made it very easy to just, you know, step one, what do we need to do? And I needed that because to take a podcast like from this big of a world, you Mm -hmm. guys then held it like you guys pulled it down a notch. Okay, step one, what do we need to do? You know, Mm -hmm. and that made it much easier for me to Mm -hmm. like just take each task as they came. And so it was it was really easy to work with you. Berta, Berta was has been so incredible to work with. Your entire team has just been so great. Oh, I love to hear that. I call Berta the yin to my yang. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you know this, but I know Berta from back in my travel days. Oh, I we didn't like know met that. each other in South Africa as like oh roommates gosh. on this same trip. And she we became friends because we were on this trip together. And then she started her own virtual assistance business. And I had reached out to her and like, oh, I could use some help, blah, blah, blah. And then in her virtual assisting, she's like, you know, I think I'm going to pivot to podcast production. And I was like, okay, interesting. And at the time I was doing an Instagram live interview show because I wanted to talk to people that I thought were doing better in business than me. Oh, I <laughs> so love that. I needed a reason to talk to them. And yeah. but I knew nothing about the tech. I knew nothing about the production, any of the syndication. There goes Wilson. Hi, buddy. He's neighborhood watchdog today. There he goes. Um, So basically what she helped me do is take that Instagram live show into podcast format. She goes, because by the time this is over, no one can ever watch it again. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, if people want the information, like this should really be a podcast. So I would have never had a podcast if Berta didn't encourage me to go down that road. Oh, I love that. 
<laughs> right? And now it's one of the things I look forward to the most because I get to talk to people I'm interested in. A lot of times I'll talk to someone who's a creator and we'll get to the end of the podcast. They're like, by the way, I have a project for you. And I'm like, amazing. <laughs> Great. Because we just chit chatted for an hour and got to like just dream about stuff and brainstorm. And it's been so fun. Um, of course, my my specialty comes in with the visuals. So the mood board and the Canva graphics and the cover artwork. Um, What was the feedback that you got around the cover artwork when you kind of previewed it or teased it? And do you feel like it's fitting, like everything is aligning the way that you envisioned? For sure. I feel like it was just like another extension of my brand and and it felt fun and relaxed and so on brand. I've already had people damning me saying you're... I love, I don't skip through your intro song. I love it. I love that oh, whole thing. Good. Yeah, which is great because normally I even just skip through it. And yeah. they're like, no, 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 I love it. And I just feel like it was, it was, it was mixing worlds that I loved, which was like wine and, you know, I love country music. And you just kind of, you went through my, I think my entire Instagram and just kind of picked yeah. up on those things and then just had these ideas and it just really fell into place. And so it looked exactly like I'd hoped for. I mean, we had, we worked through certain things, but like, like for the most part, like you nailed it. My favorite thing is seeing your podcast now in the charts where you see everybody's face forward. Yes. And then you have you and you're like topsy turvy <laughs> with the legs up in the air. And I was totally. like, that's just perfect. Cause these look yes. like little like Brady Bunch windows. And then all of a sudden here's Erica, like, like upside, down, <laughs> upside down and backwards and pouring herself some wine. That totally. to me is like so much fun. And it's, it's become such a little signature of yeah. your like extension of your brand and extension of your aesthetic to I think the more that this goes on granted we're only like three four episodes in but the more this goes on I think that'll help to kind of stand out let's talk about launch day I know you were so nervous but so excited I was so nervous I feel like we all of a sudden were just like okay guess what we're it was like a Friday and you're like okay guess what we're gonna actually launch on Monday and I'm like whoa okay Uh and and I was like you know, let's just go with it. And I was a little nervous about the fact that I didn't do like all this pre-launch marketing in a sense for week. But I also feel like I'd been teasing it for eight months that people were like, True. are you ever going to launch this thing? You know, because I would talk about it from time to time. And anytime I did a Q&A, people were like, so when's it actually launching? And I was always just scared to give a date. Mm-hmm. Um, but you guys like came to me when we were ready to go. And you're like, okay, we're let's do this on Monday. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Let's do it. And so we did it. And just I was blown away by the amount of support that I got from everybody, the feedback, the DMs, the the reviews I got, the ratings, the, you know, people um, following the podcast. It just was I was really shocked. And then when Berta was like, guess what? You hit number two in like journals. I think we, mm-hmm. we were, um, mm-hmm. you know, and then I saw myself at one point, it didn't last long, but uh-huh. I was in the top 200 for overall, all podcasts, like right next to like, um, you know, Heather McDonald. I'm like, what in the world? And so it was just, it was really rewarding to see like, wow, I can sit next to these people. Like I do belong in this space. And I just, I was really overwhelmed. And it just goes to show that I really am so grateful to have such an engaged audience that wants more for me, that is there to consume the content, that is excited about it, that supports it. And I just, I'm really, really lucky to have that behind me with this project. And this is what we talked about since the beginning with your podcast. And this is why I think I always knew it was going to be a success is you have your finger on the pulse of what your people want. Mm -hmm. Like you're so attuned. You're so like, plugged in, even when you do Q and A's and you're explaining like what a day in your life looks like, like how much time you spend in the DMS is so admirable because to me, I'm like, I answer seven messages and I'm like, I can't brain anymore. Like hundreds a day. (laughs) And especially when you're putting like your life on display, right? Because I'm sure you've gotten your fair share. I can kind of hide behind this. Like, Oh, this is my professional job. This isn't my personal self. This is my professional self, even though the two are very related. Um, but I know you're, you touch on this in some of your episodes, but talk to us a little bit about what it's like to put your yourself out there in this new piece of content with really personal conversations, your husband, your dad, your friends, everybody like that. Um, did that ever scare you or were you like, Oh, I got this. It's in the back. Well, the two individual episodes that I share were, and I say it went before I rec- like the first thing I say when I started recording is I'm really nervous to share these, these stories. Mm-hmm. Um, And the reason behind that is, is because there was, you know, heartbreak in some of those stories that I share. Um, There was other people involved. There was cancel culture involved in one of the stories. Mm -hmm. Those two I'm the most afraid of. 
with Mark, you know, the one around parenting and marriage, it just, I just know like, you're not going to please everybody. Everybody's going to have an opinion of of you. And I try to do my best to put out content in a way where no one's feeling judged, even when I share an opinion. And I just hope that people know that like, even if they differ from my opinion on certain big topics like parenting or marriage, that they know like, Hey, like we're still buddies, you know, like we can still be friends. Like we can, you can still sit at my table as long as we're respectful, even if we don't see eye to eye on these really big things. So, um, you know, those episodes have yet to launch the first few that launched, I feel like weren't very controversial in a sense or super personal. So to be determined on how those other ones, um, come out, but you guys really kind of pushed me to in a way go there with these stories. Um, and I'm still just like clammy thinking about it because I haven't aired no, yet. But. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great because, okay, also Trevor Noah just launched a podcast and they talked oh, really? about this subject specifically. Yeah. Um, and his first guest was The Rock. And they were talking uh-huh. about how The Rock got super canceled after the Maui fires because he put up a fundraiser. Yes. And people were like, how dare you put up a fundraiser? Like, you should just pay for the whole thing yourself, blah, blah, blah. But they talked about how as a culture, we've lost this ability to just disagree with people. Mm -hmm. but that immediately turns into like, how dare, like it just absolutely goes so aggressive. Yeah. And some people go so far to places like I'm going to reach out to their partnerships and try to get their partnerships taken away. And it's like, whoa. And I just, it was really bad a few years ago, but I feel like we've kind of all come to a place of let's not do this anymore. You know, I mean, it still happens in some, especially with celebrities because I'm not a celebrity, but I feel like it's calmed down tenfold. But, you know, we are heading into an election year and just different things where it's like, oh, here we go, you know? Uh So I just wait for it. But I do feel like I, the majority of my audience is, they know my intentions are always good. And or I try to at least, but they know that about me. So they give me the benefit of the doubt. And I have a lot of people who come in my DMs like, I don't agree with you on that take, but I'm still here because I know that like you are all these other things, you know, and like, and I can and still we're disagree not with asking, you. No one's asking for people to agree with a hundred percent of your opinions. No. I think like that's where it gets so lost is like, totally. you don't need to cancel someone or kick them out of your life just because they have a different point of view. And I think when you do long form content, you can chew on that a little bit more, mm-hmm. more so than like an Instagram story that gets screenshotted or something that gets DM'd or something that gets like spread around like wildfire because we also know that the social media apps are big that's baked into the success of the apps totally it's like it's gonna take the thing that's salacious and put it in front of the people that will be offended like that is how those work it is oh yeah anytime i've ever touched on like a big topic happening in the world which i don't do often because it does open me up to a lot of scrutiny my views on my stories the algorithm wants that kind of content they mm-hmm. want that controversy and so i also know that and i'm just like because my views just sometimes double which is insanity Wild. um and i just look at that like really you know like this is what we're going to push to people and there's i'm sure i yeah, i don't know the reason behind it but it's just it is very interesting but i also I try not to avoid it but at the same time like there's so much happening every single day like i can't keep Literally. up on it enough. and i'm not an expert at it so oftentimes i'll tell my audience like you don't want my opinion on this Like, I'm not an expert on this topic. Like, don't like come to me if you want a suggestion on what Chardonnay to drink. But like, totally, I I don't think you should be getting my opinion on every single thing happening. I don't think that that's responsible use of my platform. Um, But from time Uh to time, I'll go there, you know, just because I will be passionate or I'll get a wild hair at my butt. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not about Uh this situation. And people be like, whoa, you know, and they like when I kind of go off, you know, off the the line. But, um, but yeah, I try not to do it too often because my DMs will just start to flood. That's also part of being human, right? Like Mm -hmm. that's part of being human is like being fired up and being passionate about something, but then like finding your voice in that, right. Or finding the relevancy, or like you said, disclaimering it, like, I am not the expert. Like I had to say Mm -hmm. that recently, like by no means should my graphic design page be your source of news. (laughs) Like exactly. I'm not foreign policy educated. Yeah. Like I, but I'm seeing these things and I, ha- I, I feel compelled to say something. And yeah. that's like the beauty of social media. That's also like it's downfall in my opinion. 100%. Like it has the potential to just get so toxic. But also I think most level-headed normal people are not taking time out of their day to go cancel someone. For sure. And I do think that we can, I try my best to utilize my platform that I do have to put my attention towards positive things. Like how can I use my platform to go out in my own community because a large audience, a part of my audience is from where I live locally. Mm -hmm. And so I just try to lead by example, like, Hey, like let's go out and feed the firefighters when there's fires going on and, you know, just put my money where my mouth is essentially. And just because I know it can then 
it, it sparks people. People want to see good. You know, yes. I think that we're, we're told otherwise, but I really don't think it's true. And so I try my best to just put out good content and positive content as much as I can. But sometimes, you know, there's those, those times when I'm human and I'm just like, this pissed Feel me off. Feel a little off. rogue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, that's going to be fun to see kind of through the topics of your podcast as well. And, and as I explained to you, like this isn't as if you're starting a whole new business. This is just a different modality to do the same mm-hmm. thing that you know how to do well, right? This is just another, another avenue to give the people the content that they want to see, but also another way to connect with brands. I think I'm really excited sure. to see you take on sponsorships. I know that was a really big goal from day yeah. one. And I got my first um, one and, and recording that was so, it was so unique. Oh, I'd yeah. never done something like that. And, and I, I actually like loved it. And it was, it's, it's something so, and I feel like the ad that I landed on is so different than, it's not like your, you know, your normal ads Typical. that you're hearing on everybody, everybody's podcast. Right. Like this one is really, it's, it's really awesome. Right. I do have some stats because as soon as we <laughs> helped you with your sponsor deck, I'm like, I'm an idiot. Why am I not doing this for myself? <laughs> the amount of times I've had to say that after I've had a client conversation, I'm like, I just, gave some decently good advice that I'm not even implementing. (laughs) So then I went back to my team. I went back to my team and I was like, okay, we've got 130 plus episodes of this podcast. I used to run ads for some of my own digital products. Then I changed my website, didn't put them back up. And I was like, all right, let's start getting, getting better at this. But I pulled some really interesting stats about ad spend with sponsorship. So it's saying that podcast industry has had explosive growth over the last five years. We know that Mm -hmm. Um, this year alone, podcasting has grown to 464.7 million listeners worldwide. Wow. Which is crazy. And Interactive Advertising Bureau says that podcast ad spend will reach $4.3 billion by 2024. I feel like, I feel like a lot of brands are starting to get really creative and moving not away from Instagram ads and, you know, story ads and things like that, because there definitely is really good return on investment. But I also think they're pivoting because they're noticing that when you have a podcast listener that listens the entire episode, like that's, that's a that's a really good engaged person, you know, like that, that, it's not yep. just like this 15 second, like I'm going to tap through, like you've got their attention for a longer span of time. So that's, that's a really, that's some gold. And I feel like brands are really starting to pick up on that. And you've got their attention accidentally. You don't feel mm-hmm. like, like I've definitely been out on a dog walk. My phone is zipped up in my fanny pack. I'm not getting it out to fast forward through a 15 second ad, but I know the whole script for Caraway Home and Brooklinen <laughs> and Squarespace. And like, I know these and I know their codes and I've bought things because I've been a sucker for a podcast ad because mm-hmm. Athletic Green sponsors every show I've ever listened to. I'm like, all right, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Fine. Um, but I think that from being on the podcast pitching side, we pulled together this really beautiful deck for you. I've mm-hmm. got a whole podcast episode called How to Pitch, where I really break down like how I've used the pitch deck for like events and brand things like that. Um, but how has that helped you in in wrapping your head around like how this podcast could come to break even, but even into the green? Well, I think that it just really helps not just me, but like putting a visual of okay, I can I already have a lot of brands that I work with. Of so, course. you know, so I have a manager in place, which is really helpful. And I sent that to her and I was like, all right, it just kind of put pen to paper, like, because she had mm-hmm. never pitched a podcast either. And mm-hmm. so it was just, very, you made it very simple on how to, how a brand can understand how they can work in an ad. Um, and how, you know, if they choose an entire season of ads, like mm-hmm. that's one price, if they choose just one episode in the middle, this is this price. And you made it very, very, very easy. Um, I'm still, you know, we're still working on pitching brands because again, sure. brands are like, You've got to prove yourself, which I get. And I'm willing to totally do that. I have other brands who are realizing, I want to get in on this now, you Uh know? And, Uh and, um, and the thing is, is I'm trying to, I like the idea that you offered, which was kind of like a gift with purchase, you know, where Uh you suggested, Hey, to get brands to kind of go in this other direction with branding with you, why don't you also tap in and say like, Hey, I'll gift you like four stories for yep. the brand for free. And that's yep. not a lot of money. You know, my rate for those things isn't, isn't cheap, right. but I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. Like it'll, it'll be a creative way of getting them to go this way and, but also give them what they know and they know that the audience is there. So to mm-hmm. me, I'm like, it's a no brainer, but other brands are like, well, we need to wait till you get to this many downloads before we, you know, before we hi- hire you on. And I was like, got it. You know, that's a great metric, great goal. And so we're going to work towards that. The great benefit of putting stuff in a podcast too, is like, you may see traffic on episodes months from now. I know that's that's the one thing I'm learning is like, okay, Uh like, does it continue to grow? Because I know when you post, you know, a reel on Instagram, typically Uh within after 24 hours, you're not, 
really seeing traction on it anymore. It, nope. Would you say in your expertise that you're going to still see some traction weeks, months? Oh, absolutely. Road? Absolutely. And now our team is at a point where now we have this huge library, this huge backlog of content that on our social media, I'm like, how can we pull together like pseudo playlists for people on specific subject matter? Yeah. So maybe it's like the 10 most recent solo episodes or 10 interviews about social media or like, here's an expert on, this is like your social media grab bag, like Pinterest yeah. and then Instagram and then Facebook and then TikTok. So you can kind of like almost create your own coursework. And I think mm -hmm. that a lot of the conversations we had with you in the beginning is like, treat this as just an encyclopedia of what you know, right? Yeah. Your people, your subject matter, whatever that looks like, but that you can find different patterns within your content as well. And then repackage that as like, a, okay, if you're really starting this show from zero, this is how you can put this together because alternative to the toast or shows that run daily that are talking about current events, what you're talking about, it's not like that information is going to go bad. No, totally. And I was you know glad what I that mean? we chose that route because otherwise that would have stressed me out to do something where it needed to be posted constantly. Um, but course. I also think it's, I'm going to utilize this content and go back to it, all, like not content, but podcast, go back to it when people ask, Hey, like I'm trying to buy a house. Can Mark help me with that? Well, yep, sure. Here you go. Here's yep. a podcast all about it. So I'll re bring that in and, you know, like I'll bring up my dad from time to time, or if somebody has an interior design question, well, here you go. And just put it on my stories because there's going to be people who miss it or, you know, would like right. to listen to that again. So I plan on repurposing these episodes a lot when yeah. people ask these questions, which I get asked all the time, you know, so hopefully it just keeps that momentum going. Yeah, we definitely do that. I mean, part of our onboarding process for brand design includes embedded, here's the four episodes you should listen to before your first meeting, yeah. especially in that dead space between like signing a proposal and the actual project start date. It's such a nice way to like keep the person engaged, but then they're going to hear me explain things or say things that when I'm talking to them on the client call, they're like, oh yeah, I remember you talked, like it just creates that dialogue, but it's the mm -hmm. best use of your time because you're not having to say it 500,000 times. For Every sure. single time someone asks you, <laughs> um, sure. which I think is going to be so helpful for you. Absolutely. Yeah, it really is. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a, and somebody asked me the other day on my DMs, she said, why, why wouldn't you just take these conversations and go live on your Instagram and save them? And I, mm. I kind of stopped. I'm like, that's a really good question. And I, and I just said, well, the audio obviously is way better. Sure. Um, and the content is much easier to find. It's like, it's there, it's built in. It's like an encyclopedia of like, or, you know, mm -hmm. a book of, okay, what do I want to listen to from her? So it's much easier for people to find. She's like, you know, I've never had anybody explain it in that realm. And now that totally makes sense. So. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Cause there's a lot of audience that'll come over to the podcast from Instagram, but then you also have an opportunity to reach a whole new podcast audience that maybe doesn't know you on Instagram. I know. How do we do that? Like I was wondering because I uh -huh. saw like I saw on Apple, for example, not to take us totally off topic on no, my podcast, you're good. but I feel like this is good information that a lot of podcasters uh -huh. may want to know. And I don't know if you know the answer, but you know where it says like new and noteworthy? Mm -hmm. Are those people paying for that space on no. Apple? No. So they just kind mm -hmm. of pick from mm -hmm. what they okay got mm -hmm. it so so the thing that's confusing and that i i really lean on berta a lot is like understanding how podcast charts work mm -hmm. because it's very convoluted like it's not so obvious it's not a factor of like this got x number of downloads therefore it's ranked this high yeah. so when you launched it was it was the confluence of so many people subscribing in one day, so many people leaving reviews and so many people downloading and listening to the entire episode. Totally. That listen length. Is I don't even really told a lot of my factor. siblings. I told a lot of uh -huh. my siblings. I'm like, Hey, well, even if on the first day you don't have time to listen to my podcast, play it, play it in it the ride. background, <laughs> let it, let it go in the background. Exactly. Because, because they're measuring the quality of your content based on the retention rate of the listener. So really right. similar to like TikTok, for example, like mm -hmm. the retention rate on video. And now we're going to start getting those analytics with Instagram. They just made a whole announcement about how you're going to start getting more in-depth reels analytics as far as like figuring out when people drop off and what time of day is the best to post, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I think that people crave that long form conversation. I think I social too. media feels so fast. It feels so instant. It feels like, at least for me, I'm tapping through people's stories like at rapid yeah. speed. And people unless you're catching more. my attention. Yes. But like I've had longer relationships with podcasts that I've listened to than I've had romantic relationships <laughs> in my life. So I'm like, I've been listening to these people for seven years. Like yeah. that's crazy. So I think creating that relationship it's just such a nice extension of what you're already doing, which yeah. is why this makes perfect sense. Totally. And people were like disappointed. They're like, only two episodes. Like, can you just launch them all right now? I know you have them in your back pocket of like, right. nope, nope, right. you need to wait. So. Right. 
Okay. So the other thing that we've got your audience on the hook for, which you've teased out to them, but haven't officially launched is merch. By the time this episode is live, your merch shop will be live. I'm so excited. Um, This was like the biggest selling point for Mark. You know, Mark is like a very, um, you know, he's economical. And so when I talked mm -hmm. about hiring you guys on, he's like, well, how are you going to make the, like, what's the return on investment? How are you going to make money back? And, and the second that I said, they're going to help me make merch, he's like, all right, let's do it. (laughs) Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, the merch is so fun. I know one of the things you talked about in the beginning was like, I don't want to touch it. So you were like, I love the idea of merch, but your background is in sales with Quicksilver and Roxy, had, right? I had had a um, Quicksilver and Roxy. I worked with them and I was the sales representative for Northern California. But then when, when I launched Whiskey and Lace, it was originally a boutique and I had not a warehouse. It was in Mark's parents' garage, actually, of mm. inventory and customers and shipping. And I... I, that, that did not, it didn't fail, but it did not work. Um, and so, and I got away from it because it was too, like I bit off way more than I could chew. And Mm -hmm. so I think I'm just really, um, apprehensive about like getting into that space again, even though I think with now having the platform that I have, it could be far more successful than what we had in the beginning when we didn't have this platform. Um, but it is a lot of work to like have a warehouse, have employees, you know, deal with customers, returns, all that stuff is just like, it's a huge task and I was not ready to take that on. Um, it may not even ever happen because I'm so like, like so yeah. nervous about it. So when, when I said that to you, you had so many other solutions where I didn't have to touch it. I could still get the things that I wanted and my audience will be very excited when it launches. And I think what we're doing is we're pulling some notes out of like good old Kim K's playbook, right? So we're talking a lot about what, what does a merch drop look like? How can we create some hype? How can we create kind of like pull people into the idea, but still have them be excited. And I think the more you do the podcast, you're going to have even more like inside jokes and sayings and catchphrases and things that is, are going to be so ripe for merch. Mm-hmm. It's going to be awesome. I agree. It's going to be awesome. And, yeah. I, I just, I think people, they, every time I bring up, you know, certain things um, like Lodge Lady and when I call everybody whiskeys, they're always like, make that into merch, make that into merch. And, you know, and it just was like, it needed to be done right. I really wanted, as you know, like we kind of came out of the gates with a lot of things and everything in me just kept going, you know what? I think I just want to start small and I want just this really concise and honed in offering for everybody um, and see how that does. And, you know, it's hard because we're in parameters with working with the, you know, things that we're working with, which makes it difficult. But at the same time, I feel like we are going to offer them enough and they're going to love it. So I just cannot wait to get it off the ground. And what a fun extension. I think that people are buying into like brands in this way, but like creators in this way, the same way that I'm sorry, men have been doing with sports since the beginning (laughs) of time. Totally. Like, I think this is like, it's such an interesting parallel of like what sports team you wear is telling somebody about you. Like you've got some kind of story or relation or connection to the place. Maybe you live there. Maybe you're from there. Maybe it was your dad's favorite team, your mom's favorite team, whatever. And I think that extending that into the podcasting space and creating merch for people that they're like, no, I follow this girl on Instagram and she just loves this podcast. And like, I just am obsessed and I want to wear it and love it. Forever. Well, well, that's what I wasn't sure of. I'm like, wait, are people really going to want to wear a sweatshirt that says whiskeys on it? Because everyone's going to ask, what's a whiskey? And be like, well, I am one. And then, uh-huh. and then more and more people kept just DMing me like, I want that. I want that. I'm like, all right, let's do this, you know? So yes, I to give the people yes. what they want. And I can't wait to give it away to people. And like, you know, uh-huh. just, I think it's just such a, an organic extension of my brand again. And you guys really helped bring that to life. So um, I just it's cannot wait so to fun. see that. Yeah, it's going to be great. I can't wait to see people like unboxing their stuff and putting it on with your podcast playing in the background. Like I'm excited for that moment. Same. Same. And hopefully they're gifting it to people. Um, I just feel like there's just some kitschy things that we have that are going to make great gifts. And, um, and I just can see everybody, whoever doesn't like, you know, whoever doesn't like to ski and they're sitting in that lodge and they're like, Oh yeah you know, we have this term lodge lady and I came up with it last year when I retired from skiing and I was like, well, now I'm just a, I'm a professional lodge lady. And everyone's like, you need to put that on a sweatshirt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just mm-hmm. think it's going to resonate with so many people. So, you mm-hmm. know, there's just little elements that are so intertwined with my brand 
that um, mm-hmm. just work perfectly on a sweatshirt. Yeah. And I think it's just, a, <laughs> again, a fun extension of like, I think it just symbolizes for you also, like it's your audience that's like, they're not taking themselves so seriously. Mm-mm. It's like, they want something fun. They want something easy to throw on. They want to be able to relate to their fellow, you know, mom at the carpool pickup area and be like, oh, you too? Like you listen to this too. And then you all of a sudden you have some common ground. And I think that community building is really your superpower. Yeah. Yeah, And I think it's good that we were going in an avenue where I didn't have to commit to inventory. You know, it's all made to order and that sort of thing. So like that, that made it less daunting again without having cost up front. So um, absolutely, we'll see how it goes. I will take it from there. That'll be amazing. Okay. (laughs) If you had to fast forward three years from now and Whiskey and Lace podcast is the the number one podcast in the world, what does that what extension does that look like for you? Like, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself taking this on tour? Do you see yourself hosting oh my trips? Gosh. People have been, I, I just got back from Mexico and posted a really funny photo of me um, at, at a place called Squid Row in Mexico, which if you've never been, oh mm-hmm. my gosh, it's quite an adventure. Um, and people are like, you need to do whiskeys in the wild and like mm. have us all come together, like whiskeys in the wild. So I could, I could, I've done meet and greets in the past and people mm-hmm. show up like, you know, like close to hundred of people, you know, hundreds, of, not hundreds, like around a hundred people will show up to these different mm-hmm. events I do here in wine country. And that's just here. That's just my local audience. So I get told all the time, do a meet and greet in, you know, New York and Austin. And I would absolutely, I could absolutely see myself doing this. Um, like, oh, you honestly, could crush. It'd be so much fun. And we could add in so many fun elements. Um, I don't even know how to be, I mean, maybe I'll hire you to help me with that. because Yes. <laughs> Consider me planting the seed. Consider me clipping this. Let's clip this. And three years from now, when we're doing Whiskey's Weekend in Napa, and it's everybody, there's like a live podcast component. You bring out Mark as your celebrity guest. Exactly. And you got your dad. And yeah. you're selling the merch. And then everybody goes out and goes wine tasting. Like, duh. That's yeah. Sounds amazing. Well, we've talked about doing retreats, you and I, and yes. we just we need to really like get that that moving. I think I think we just like wanted to get this podcast off the ground, and then we'll Absolutely. go on to the next thing. But I do. I think that there's this this year, and especially after you know the pandemic and everybody mm-hmm. being so isolated, you know, we're a few years after that now. But I do think that there's just this want for feeling more and more connected to the people that yes. you enjoy, and so I do think that there's something to be said about doing something like that. It's just you know I have to build in. Well, how am I going to generate revenue from doing something like that. And I've, cause I've planned a few trips before where I've brought in to wine country, like five influencers or 10 influencers, and then sure. people bought tickets to come, but I didn't make a dime, like in the amount of effort yes, that took a lot of work. to plan all that. I was just like, it was great. It, you know, I, I brought in girls that had huge followings that helped me in that sense. But I was like, unless I can do this and make it make sense financially, like I, I just can't. So those are details that we'd have to iron out. But I do think people would pay to come and listen to a podcast live. A thousand percent, I, a thousand percent, so. especially like if you think of girlfriends that have like moved across the country from each other and they like are looking for that excuse to be like, I really just want to go to Colorado and do this yeah. Lodge Lady Whiskey's weekend. Will you come <laughs> with me? Let's ditch so our families fun. at home and go like sit in the cabin and drink hot toddies like that is so that to me I can see that crystal clear and I the seed all plant is like let's get the brands to finance it I just got the chills because I think that this could be so much fun (laughs) <laughs> Let's get the brands and say, hey, brands, like not yeah. only do I need you, to, I want you to be the premier sponsor of this Whiskey's Weekend, but will you also contribute something to the goodie bags, Barefoot yeah. Dreams? Will you also show up and like give us, you know, compass? Will you hook us up with a sick house to stay in? Like, totally. Uh, I think it's just the, it's the melting of all of your things together. That's going to be so perfect. I just need somebody to like kind of pull all the details into place and then like, I'll show up and I'll sell it all on my Instagram. Like that's what I, that's exactly why I hired you guys to do the podcast. I'm like, I'll bring what I need to, to the table, what I'm good at and what I can excel at. But like those intricate detailed parts is where yeah. I lack. I'm just like, it's too much. I can't, you know? So yeah, but I think you're already salivating at the idea. Like I can tell, <laughs> I can tell a little bit. You're like, okay, wait okay, a okay. second. Let's but that's it. like my favorite thing. This is what I call, that's my, like, that's a Raven. Do you remember this show yes. on Disney oh channel? Gosh. Yes, This I is do. my, I can like whoosh and zoom in. <laughs> to the future and be like, this is what this looks like. And I already know that like there would be the lodge lady merch and there would be welcome bags and there would be, you'd have like the bachelor, you'd have some kind of like country artists do a private concert for you guys like out and everyone's got their branded mugs and we're all dancing and singing and there's a concert and they're like that. It just like all those things, like that's the vision that I feel like that's the extension. That's the evolution of this. So let's, why not just keep going in that direction? That's the best part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, 
Thank you so much for your time. Where can everyone you. find you, follow you, listen to you on the podcast? Yes. Plug so it. you can listen to me on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Are there any others that I'm missing? I'm sure. Any Anywhere you listen to any of your podcasts, I will be on Bingo. there. You can find me at Whiskey and Lace. Same with Instagram is at Whiskey and Lace and TikTok. Um, but I also have a blog where you're going to be able to find my merch and that's um, whiskeyandlaceblog.com. So I'm so excited yeah. to, if you're new, I'm so excited to have you become a whiskey. <laughs> yes. Welcome. I've been sending it to friends of mine too. And I'm like, wait a second, actually, I think you would love this. And so I've got, I've got a <laughs> few converts. Oh yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah. Well, thank well, you for all your help in making this come to life. I really appreciate yay. you and your team so much. So. Oh my gosh. I can't believe when we re-record for your season two and you're like, oh, remember when we recorded after season one, like look at us now. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> Look at it now. Oh my God. Child's so play. Totally. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for All your right, time, Erica. You. And thanks everybody for listening. We'll catch you thank next you. time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.